everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is emily and i am working on a goal to become debt free on my channel i normally do cash stuffings and budget with me's anything cash related but today it is officially vlogmas with a twist day 22 guys day 22 so um what we're doing today is my wrap-up video pretty much um however <laughs> The video that I'm posting is quite lengthy. I'm gonna give you guys a little heads up, okay? Because uh, my friend Megan and I went over a lot of information. She gave us a lot of tips. So I need you guys to make sure you have a notebook, make sure you have a pen and paper, because there is a lot of information. Now, because the video is so lengthy, I didn't wanna add more to it. So, surprise, we're gonna have another bonus video. So this mini series is actually going to be nine videos instead of eight. So I wanted to post just a quick, that one's going to be very quick though. We're just going to go through my binder because I'm also waiting on a couple things that I want to add to this that were in the mail. So, um, you know, I want to give you guys a complete view of my full binder. So it kind of worked out, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go on over to the interview that i did with my friend megan if you don't know who she is she is the one that helped me plan this whole entire trip guys so here it is enjoy hi emily hi megan how are you doing today i'm good how are you <laughs> i'm great i'm great I'm, all I'm right guys i'm excited to talk about disney <laughs> yes I mean, I've been, this whole series, I've been like, I couldn't wait to get to this video because I kind of, it's like the wrap up. That's it. Like, there's no more after this, right? Yeah. So, um, so guys, if you're watching, I mean, you should be watching, right? <laughs> well, this is my friend Megan and I'm going to let her introduce herself and she can tell you guys a little bit about what she does. And then we're going to jump right into Disney and I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to hear what she got to say because you know, guys, we are a budgeting channel. So we want to know how to save money, right? Doesn't everybody want to know how to save money? <laughs> so she's going to give us some insights into how we can do that. So take it away. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, I'm Megan. I am, I wear many hats. I'm actually an attorney <laughs> um, and do a couple other things in the legal field. But like 10 plus years ago, I worked for a cruise line and I just loved helping people plan their vacations. And so in the last actually right before the pandemic, I signed up with Cruise Brothers to be a home-based travel agent, just as something on the side to help friends, family, friends of friends, <laughs> all of that to kind of help their vacations. Um, there are travel agents who specifically only do Disney. There are some that do only cruises. There are some that do everything. I primarily just do cruises and Disney. That, those are kind of my focus because that's what I feel the most comfortable with. That's what I think I have the most knowledge with to really help people with their vacations. So if you need any help planning a Disney trip, a Disney cruise, any other kind of cruise, um, a few all-inclusives if you're interested in that, um, I can help you with that. Uh, I have my name here as Getaway with MJ. That's my screen name on Instagram. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me there and I can help you out with that but we're here today to talk about how to save you money. So <laughs> I know one of the big ones that, that I mentioned to you, and I think you mentioned it in one of your videos, was souvenirs. It's so expensive in the parks. And what does every single ride at Disney do? They drop you into a gift shop. And if you have kids, this is a nightmare because they're they just got off this great ride. They're so excited about it. They get into a gift shop where they want everything that's right in their face. And Disney knows what they're doing there, right? They know that mom and dad or grandma or, you know, brother, sister, whoever's with them is just going to like give in to those little cries for please. <laughs> and they're going to get them something from the gift shop. That is so difficult, right? To then tell your kids like, Ooh, this is super out of budget. This is like $40 for something that, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know if we can swing that on all nine rides that we're doing today. Right. Um, it just really adds up quickly. So, um, this actually, I can't take credit for this idea. This is an idea that I first heard about from, um, uh, AJ on Disney food blog, which is a channel I'm going to talk about later. That's a great channel for, you know, Disney tips. Um, but she said, grab your souvenirs before, 
keep them in your book bag. That way, when you come off of a ride, you can hand a souvenir to your kid and say, hey, look what, what I got for you here, right? So if you know that your kid, let's talk about Epcot. Let's say you know your kid is a huge Elsa and Anna fan, huge Olaf fan. They get off of Frozen Ever After and they are just mind blown. They want all the Frozen gifts. How about you know in advance that's their favorite ride, grab a souvenir, have it in your bag that you get off of Amazon or Target or Walmart or wherever you get it for a much lower cost, hand it to them, hey, look what I got you, right? You're immediately then directing them out of the gift shop and they've got a souvenir from this ride that they just, you know, went on that was so exciting for them, right? But they don't know the difference. <laughs> um, now, if you have like a 11 or 12 year old, they might know the difference, right? But five, six, you know, younger kids are not going to know that difference. And they're also not going to understand when you say, well, this thing that you want right here is $60 and that's too much, right? <laughs> they're not always understanding, you know, the realities of that either. So this is a way to kind of do that. Another way to save on souvenirs um, is going to the gift shops that are on International Drive or in the surrounding area. So maybe the day before you get in or one of those days that you have free, um, you know, you tell the kids, hey, here's $20. This is your budget for souvenirs. We're going to go to a mega souvenir store where you can get anything that you want with this money. Um, so. When you're in the gift shop, you can remind them of that. Oh, remember, we're going to go to the big souvenir store, right? And you can spend whatever you want there. And that way you keep them within a budget as well, right? And kind of remind them that that's when they're getting their souvenirs, not so much here. Oh, these aren't the things we're going to buy. We're going to go and buy it here at the big souvenir store. Now, if you want to give them that, you know, $10, $20 or whatever to spend however they want in the park, that's great. But I mean... You know, all the kids I've met, it's going to be gone in the first hour of the day. And then they're going to be crying the rest of the day, right? Of why can't I get this and why can't I get that? So um, I think that's one way that it gives them still something to look forward to. And then when they go to the big souvenir store that's on International Drive or in the surrounding areas, they have all the time in the world to look and decide and, and make their choices. Um, and again, you just have to kind of think what works best for your kids at what age group, right? Because different things might work for different people. Here's the other tip, and this is sort of a money-saving tip in general, um, is the Chase Disney Visa card. So I have a Chase Disney Visa debit. So just with my regular Chase account, it's a debit card that I get Disney perks with. So, um, you know, years ago, and I don't think they're doing this anymore, but years ago they used to have a lounge at the Food and Wine Festival in Epcot. And if you had a Chase card, you could have access to that lounge. If you didn't have a Chase card, you didn't have access. So there are perks. There's perks here and there to having some of these kinds of cards. One of the perks is um, a 10% merchandise um, discount if you spend a certain amount. There's also discounts at some restaurants on property. Um, so if you end up, if you have a Chase Visa card, either credit or debit, just go and look that up, look up what those those perks are. If you have a Chase account and just a regular debit card, talk to your bank about switching it and see what those perks are at, at the time and what promotions are running. And you, you can sometimes save some money that way, um, depending on what you're gonna do. Especially if you were on property and you were thinking about going to one restaurant over the other, why not choose the restaurant that you're gonna get the 10% off at, right? Um, so, oh, quick, oh quick, quick question. <laughs> Um, that, so it's not like a credit card though. No, they have a credit card or a debit card. So my Disney, mm. um, visa is my debit card with my Chase account. So just yeah. a regular bank account, you can just convert it into a Disney. Oh, that's kind of like a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. So if you already have a Chase account, which so many people do, right? It's one of the biggest things. Go get the debit card, right? Um, it might even be worth it if you've got a big enough trip where you're doing a lot of stuff or a lot of people are involved and you're going to be going to a lot of restaurants, it might be worth just opening, you know, opening a small bank account for travel and, and mm -hmm. paying those fees and then go back and close it out when you come home. Right. Um, but it, it also depends because you want to, yeah. you want to look at what those promotions are that are running, what's active at the time. I notice sometimes they'll send me an email that, oh, we've got this going for a deal. And then maybe those deals aren't always available. So always just check their website and see what the active perks are at the time. 
That's so cool. I didn't know that existed. And it would be good for like frequent Disney uh, visitors. Like if you go to Disney a lot, it might be worth just having that Chase debit yep. for that purpose only and just yep. have that as your vacation account, you know? Yep. That's actually a really sounds, good idea. It sounds like such a small amount. And also it is a little bit limited because it's not all restaurants. It's not all, you know, locations. But if you're going a lot or if you know you're going to go to some of these specific places or, you know, running some of these specific promotions, over time, 10% is something, right? It saves you money. So, um, and then that brings me to my other small savings. And that's the Target Red Card. So the Target Red Card is also a credit or debit option. So you can talk to your local Target about how to set that up. The credit card is obviously the easier one to set up. I think with the debit, you have to put money on in advance. Um, and I'm not sure how, how that works. So just uh, talk to Target about that and see how you can set up a, a debit card for the Red Card. But Red Card purchases gives you 5% discount on everything. So what does that mean? You go to Target, you buy your Disney gift cards, you get a 5% discount on those Disney gift cards. If you're doing a big trip, that can add up, right? That can add up if you are doing a big trip, 5%, 5%, 5% on, you know, three or four $200 gift cards or three or four $50 gift cards, right? If you're saving 5%, then if you're using a gift card on your, on your Disney account, and every single time you go and have a meal, that's basically a 5% discount on your meal. Every single time, because you purchase these gift cards with your 5% discount on your red card. Um, another thing to think about is we're at holiday season. We've got a whole, you know, year, um, a couple months now before your trip. If people have birthdays coming up, if people want to get you gifts for things, you know, I was not shameful about it at all before I got married for birthdays. If I know I have a trip coming up, I'm like, ooh, Disney gift card. Disney gift <laughs> card. That's what I want, right? Um, do do not get me a candle. Do not get me perfume. Do not, a Disney gift card, please, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and those, those really can come in clutch. Even if somebody's just giving you a $20 gift card here, $10 gift card there, um, you know, really it easy. Adds it adds up and really easy to get at Target. And, um, you know, because there's always people asking, oh, what do your kids want for for this or that or Disney gift cards please <laughs> and you know and then and then they can if, if they're getting it as a gift say hey this is what you can use to get those souvenirs in a shop or this is what you can use to buy that t-shirt or whatever it is so um those kinds of things add up and and that's the thing with Disney I think you're not ever going to see major slashing of prices major discounts you're not going to see Disney advertise in the same way that you do other travel companies where they're like half off ticket prices or, you know, 50% off rooms. You're not going to see those kinds of things. Sometimes they'll do like Florida resident promotions where it's like 20% off a room or something like that. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> Had a call to <laughs> so sometimes you're going to see. Um, you're never going to see big discounts with Disney. You're never going to see like huge 50% off tickets or, um, you know, 30% off all host hotel stays. You'll see some Florida resident discounts sometimes in a slow season, 20% off rooms, things like that. But they're also usually not heavily advertised, right? You don't always mm -hmm. see those big kind of travel discounts like you do with other travel companies. Um, where you save money at Disney are the little things right? Good planning and saving a little bit here, a little bit there, which is why 5% target red card to get those Disney gift cards. Um, you know, 10% here and there, depending on what you're doing with the Disney chase visa. Um, and then one of the biggest savings that I personally haven't tried, I also can't book it for you, but I know people have saved money, um, is on property. You can, you can stay on property with DVC points. So what's DVC? DVC is Disney vacation club. There are lots of people all over the world that are members of Disney Vacation Club. It's a little expensive and they don't always use all their points. So there are so many websites out there where people sell their points so that people can stay on property and they end up selling them at a discount, right? So you could end up, I mean, I've heard people staying at like Animal Kingdom Lodge for like 60, 70% off, you know, what it would be because they got Disney Vacation points. 
personally, as a traveler, I've looked into it. It gets a little complicated, right? <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing. It's not super easy to navigate all the different sites. There are multiple sites that do DVC rentals um, or DVC vacation point sales. Do your research, make sure it's a legitimate company, look them up, try to you know speak to people on the phone, try to see if your friends or family have done that. It's one of the, you know, travel agents can't book it, right? Um, so it's something that you kind of have to go and seek out on your own. But if you're willing to kind of do the labor and do the work to do it, you can see some big savings for some of these really premium properties um, at Disney World. Um, but I'm all for the all-star, right? <laughs> like I'm yeah. all for Port Spring, Port Orleans, Caribbean Beach Club, all the, you know, moderate resorts. And then, you know, like that second tier, they're great, right? They're great resorts. They've got lots of theming, which is so fun. You're not prohibited from visiting other resorts, right? Like there's other resorts that have great restaurants. Boma, amazing. It's the, I believe Boma is the all you care to eat breakfast. I highly recommend it, right? Like it's a good price. You're going to, you know, another resort and kind of getting that experience on property. Um, no one's keeping you from doing that. So once you're on Disney property, you can kind of roam around. We, I actually, with my family, we weren't even going to Disney or staying. We happened to be in Orlando one weekend and we went over to the contemporary and watched the fireworks at Magic Kingdom, you know, from the contemporary, just kind of hung out there, you know, and you can have dinner there and, and you know, ride the monorail. And that's a whole experience in itself. So um, once you're on property, there's lots of options. You don't necessarily have to stay at these hotels that are super, super high priced, right? Um, all of the hotels on Disney property are pretty nice. Um, and there's That's lots pretty of cool because it, it gives you more variety. So you're not stuck in that one hotel. If you're able to look at the other ones, and it also gives you an idea for a future vacation. If oh. you want to switch hotels, you know, if you see one that's like, oh, wait a minute, this one actually looks better than that one. You know, you, you kind of, right. that's pretty cool that you can or like cross. Vibe, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like you're going with your kids. So I think All Star is one of the best options for kids, especially when you're doing a park heavy trip where you really want to see the parks. My husband and I are thinking about going for our anniversary. We, if we do stay on property, we're thinking about staying off property because we're just doing one day in one park. But if we stay on property, we would probably do something like Port Orleans or Coronado Springs or Caribbean Beach Club. They're a little more laid back. They're not super expensive. Um, and I don't want to say that they're not kid friendly because everything at Disney is kid friendly, right? But it's not as much for kids to do at those resorts, right? They have the pools and stuff like that. But, you know, I think the theming is very much to that resort and not as much some of the other Disney theming that you might see, you know, at the all-star resorts, um, you know, and, and so they're just different. They, they have a little bit of a different vibe. Um, and, and so I think it just depends on the kind of trip you're, you're taking and what you're going for. Um, we thought, you know, down the line, if we want to take a big family trip, we plan on getting a cabin at Fort Wilderness. That's something that we're looking into. So there's that's, all that's so options. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it that'll and and you have like a kitchen there, so you can kind of you know. So it's that one. I think we're we're looking forward to as a family. But you know, you just kind of have to mm -hmm. see what what works for you. Yeah, <laughs> I might have to come back and revisit you. I mean, you're already going to plan my cruise for 2023. Like I, <laughs> I got to tell you, like the outline that you provided me helped me with my whole mini series like so much and I've actually gotten a lot of DMs and a lot of messages from people saying the same thing. So um your your the service that you provide is like I mean I I love it. <laughs> like I said, it's been great for me. <laughs> and um so I'm gonna leave your information obviously in the description of the video because I do want if anyone is trying to plan so like you do any parts though, right? Like if um, yeah, I any also Disney do, yeah, I also, I do any, any Disney, I also do universal, um, you know, so I do, I do book universal trips. I'm probably better with Disney. <laughs> so, um, but I, you know, with universal, I, I definitely can book it for you. I definitely have recommendations. I just haven't, I've only stayed at two of their resorts on, on their property. Um, so I'm just not as familiar. A lot of the newer stuff that they have, like Volcano Bay and everything, I haven't been there. Mm -hmm. So there's some things that I'm not as familiar with with Universal. So I think Disney's my sweet spot. But absolutely, mm -hmm. if people want to do a day or two, I think we even talked about like 
do we do a day at Universal and then like a little bit of mm -hmm. Disney? And sometimes it's too much, right? It's too much to do in one trip. I think Disney already can be so overwhelming. So that's yeah. why I, I try that not every agent does that. Some agents do other things that are really helpful. I find that that's how I plan my own trips with kind of like those little breakdowns. So that's what I provide for people um, is, is a little breakdown of the trip after we've had a chance to talk about what you're looking to do. Um, and I only had like two other things. And um, one of them is kind of a time is money, money saver. And that's if you're staying on property. Sure, Disney hotels can sometimes be expensive. But um, at different points in the year, you get anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes early park entry if you're staying on property. So if you are a Disney resort guest, you're getting extra time in the parks. What does that mean? You, we talked about Genie Plus and how, you know, that that's basically the new fast pass, right? Well, now they also have what, um, there's a YouTuber named um, All Years, and she's sort of coined some of them like fancy rides. So for example, Rise of the Resistance in um, Hollywood Studios. It's a fancy ride. So if you have Genie Plus, you have to, on top of paying for Genie, Genie Plus, which is $15 per person per day, it's an additional, like, I don't know, $25, $30 per person to get basically a fast pass, to get a lightning lane, to cut the line for that ride. That's a lot of money if you have multiple people in your party, right? Well, one of the rides that everyone wants to go on, that can add up so fast. But if you are staying on property, you are the first person in the park. And if you can get there when the park opens, you can make a mad dash to Rise of the Resistance, ride it first, and that saves you money because you're not waiting in line all day long or with a chance that you're not even going to be able to get on the ride. Um, if you check the Disney app now, you can see from day to day how long the wait times are, even before you're in the park. I check them from time to time just to see what wait times are looking like on, on various days, and it can get long. It can get real, That's real good to long. Know. That's good to know for when we're in the park too, that the Disney app tracks the, tra the times. So that way you can kind of gauge, okay, let's see which rides can we do now? How long we got to wait? Over, you know, that's yep. that's a good idea. I didn't know that they had that either. They There's do. An and that. When There's an app do, for everything. <laughs> and, and also the morning of when you are, when you have Genie Plus, you can start, I think, booking some of your stuff for Genie Plus at like seven o'clock in the morning. So as soon as you're like waiting for the bus, like up waiting for the bus to go to the park, start booking some of those those lightning lanes, right? Start getting your day going um, because otherwise you can you could wait end up waiting a really really long time. So I'm looking now and let's see. Okay, so right now Rise of the Resistance is a 130 minute standby line. Wow! So over two hours in line for one ride. Yeah. In the middle of a Sunday, right? So, and I've seen it That's get crazy. higher than that. Higher than that. So, in addition, I mean, you've got other ones. Millennium Falcon, 60-minute wait right now. Slinky Dog Dash, 95 minutes. It's insane, right? And so, when you've got Genie Plus, that's great because some of those rides, like Millennium Falcon, you could get a lightning lane for that, right? But the fancy rides, which I think it's only two per park, you can't. So that extra 30 to 60 minutes in the morning is a huge time saver because you can run to those fancy rides first thing in the morning and you can ride it before the lines get long um, and not have to pay that extra on top of Genie Plus.